Which of the following is better? A new PC, a cloud-based PC, a virtual machine on an existing PC or a Mac? Which of those choices would you make? Well, these days we have many choices of what we'll use to accomplish our computational and productivity needs. And in this video, I'm going to look at some of these choices, what they are, and why and when we might want to be using one versus the other. The reality is, is there won't be a clear winner in this video. There just isn't one choice that meets everyone's needs. What I do hope you'll get from watching this video is an idea of the choices you have and how they compare to each other. And at the end of the video, I'll let you know what I'm doing. In comparing options, the first step is to understand your use case and to be honest with yourself. Some of you will use a computer to send emails, run office applications, and use the internet. That's all you'll do with your computer. Some of you will use a computer to play high-end video games. Some of you will use a Mac and only occasionally need a PC. Some of you will be programmers or data analysts. And those are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to how, the different ways that we can use computers. I'm sure that there are many other ways that people watching this video use their computers and comment down below to let me know what you're doing with your computer and why you choose one type of computational environment over another. The point of this video is to look at some of those many options that we have and some, that, some are relatively new and they're, they've, or they've recently evolved. So that becomes an option that maybe previously wasn't there for us and now it might actually be viable. That might make us rethink whether we actually need to use the resources we have, whether we're using them efficiently, and whether there might actually be a better way because of that evolution. So let's ask yourselves a question. Are you really running your fancy gaming PC at full throttle 24 hours a day? Or are you actually mostly watching YouTube videos, hitting like buttons, subscribing, clicking bell notifications so that you don't miss out on any other videos? That's really a good use of your computer. You should do that right now. It's about understanding your personal use case, or if you're an IT department, the various use cases of your clients and your users. Now, for many people I know, students, colleagues, viewers like you, you might be using an Apple system, and you only need to use Windows to run a specific program or on a limited time basis. And I'll talk more about that when we look at the different options we have for those of you that are Mac users. First up, should you get a new PC? Should you buy new hardware? I made this video on about how, about how buying a new PC might not be a good idea, mostly made for my students that were running Macs, and they only needed a PC for a few labs or for a few hours a week over an entire semester. And that video really took off with plenty of positive and negative comments on that video saying you should or you shouldn't do this. And while I was advocating for the use of an Azure cloud virtual machine in that video, there are times when actually owning your own hardware does make sense. For example, if you're using the PC operating system for hours and hours a day, and you have the funds to buy a new PC, then over time, it might just make sense to buy a new laptop or a desktop and be done. You don't have to pay any monthly expenses. There's no additional configuration. And uh, the, the total cost of ownership for businesses on buying that hardware can be a bit more complex. But for an individual, it just might make sense to go out and buy it. The other thing is, you might need to be technical so that you can set up and service that system. And if you are technical, then that might also make sense to buy a new PC, especially if you're also working with peripheral hardware, such as a 3D printer or manufacturing equipment, those types of things. Now, maybe you're in a secure environment and you don't need to worry about physical theft of that system or damage to it or losing it. Another good reason to buy a PC outright. Another good reason might also be that you don't have internet access. So for example, in order to run a cloud VM, you're going to need to have internet access. Or maybe you don't have a lot of hardware resources. Maybe it makes sense to go and buy something like a Raspberry Pi 400. So despite my having made that video about the benefits of a cloud VM, there are absolutely times when owning your own hardware does make sense. Now in terms of what hardware to buy, that's a huge topic. Uh, for less demanding workloads, there's Raspberry Pi, Pi 400s, there's Chromebooks, there's an upcoming Surface Student Edition, Surface SE, which I'm really excited to take a look at. But at the other end, you can go heavily into water-cooled multi-GPU gaming rigs that are absolute beasts with a price tag to match. Well, buying your own computer was the traditional way to gain access to those compute and storage resources, we actually have some new choices that just might be better for a lot of users. For example, 
creating a virtual machine in Microsoft Azure or buying a Windows 365 subscription is a way that we can run a computer in a Microsoft data center. And then we access it with a multitude of different devices, phones, tablets, low powered systems, accessing that higher powered system, uh, MacBooks accessing Windows, uh, Windows accessing Linux. There are many benefits to those cloud-based systems. For one thing, you don't have to put money up front. You can rent the resources you need when you need them and pay less or even nothing when you don't use those resources. This is a concept called elasticity, the ability to scale resources up and down on an as needed basis. We do this with things like Uber or a taxi. It could also be that you have an Apple system most of the time, but you need Windows system just every so often. Well, you can do that as well. You keep your Mac and you run the Windows operating system in the cloud when you need it. This is an area that's evolved quite a bit in the last few years, especially the last uh, year and a half. And for example, Microsoft released Windows 365, which is a way to subscribe to a persistent cloud-based Windows system. Windows 365 is great for companies that want to procure a company system image to their end users, no matter what device they're using at home which uh, by creating that dedicated system that's separate from their system at home, that's good for security and for configuration. It's often a way to isolate and protect the company's software from interference from personal software. And here on this channel, I have videos on how we can use Windows 365 with an iPhone, an iPad, Mac, and even a Raspberry Pi, a very low powered device accessing a fairly powerful device in the cloud. The other benefits uh, include that your, your system and all your data information is stored safely in a data center with geo redundancy. So that way you are protected from things like theft, damage, or other types of loss. If something goes wrong, if somebody takes your, your iPad that you've been using to access Windows 365, you do have to replace the iPad, but your actual work system and all your data and everything is still protected. Now the cloud's not perfect. Uh, you do rely on a good internet connection, a reasonable internet connection. Uh, there are monthly or usage charges involved, which can get out of hand if you don't manage them. For example, leaving your computer running, a high powered computer running 24 seven when you're not using it. And I have a video uh, on the top reasons not to use a cloud-based VM. And I do have a video on the best reasons to use a cloud-based VM. So, but are those our only choices? There is something else that might uh, meet your needs as well. If you need a PC operating system or a uniquely configured system that's separate from your main system, that's virtual machines. Creating a local virtual machine is a little more complex, but I'm sure as you've guessed, I have videos on the channel on how to do that as well. But the biggest challenge is that in order to run a virtual machine locally, you'll be sharing the local resources of your existing computer. So you'll need enough storage processor and especially memory on your machine in order to run two or more systems at the same time on the same hardware because it's going to be a shared pool of resources. This is something we do a lot in on-premise data centers. We create dedicated systems just to run virtual machines and then we have users connect to those virtual machines or we have those virtual machines running server services. That allows us the flexibility to adjust resources, add resources and do a whole lot more. And that's a bit more complex. Um, as consumers, there are several different scenarios I see. I often see a Mac user with a powerful Mac running a virtual machine running Windows, or I'll see a Mac or Windows user that wants to run a virtual machine to learn Linux, or I'll see a Mac or a Windows user running a virtual machine so that they can have a different configuration from their main system. For example, if they want to run a Windows server in order to learn and do different labs with the Windows server, but they don't want to change uh, the configuration of their Windows 10 or Windows 11 operating system. So some important points on a virtual machine though. You can't run a Mac virtual machine on a Windows system. Not legally, and I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video or any video. Uh, Apple has uh, changed their chip architecture. So they're now running M1 processors on the new machines that are coming out. So you do have to make sure that the software you're running to do the virtualization is compatible with your hardware. You, you also have to pay and buy and license that virtualization software and any licenses required for the operating system that you're planning to run in that virtual machine. Now Linux is free and you can get trial or academic licenses for some operating systems. But if you're running a full Windows operating system as a virtual machine on a Mac, 
you need to pay the license for that full Windows license. Uh, personally, I like using virtual machines quite a bit because I have been for years and I have many systems that are configured to specific teaching scenarios that are virtual machines. I have uh, SQL servers, web servers, systems for testing programs, a lot of them. And this is why my main laptop that I do have, a physical machine, is a very powerful machine so that I can run virtual machines on it at the same time as I run my own programs on the system, I can run virtual machines for teaching and such. And I, I do have some videos again here on the channel on how to create virtual machines. But if you want more on virtualization, let me know. It's an area that I do a lot with. So I can, uh, I can do many more videos on virtualization. So now we're at the question, what is the best choice? Should we buy a new PC? Should we use an Azure virtual machine? Should we use Windows 365? Should we run a bunch of virtual machines locally? And personally, I do all of the above. My use case scenario is that I teach and I have this channel. So for myself as a multi-system, multi-device user, I have different options for different purposes. But that stated, my main system is a powerful uh, Alienware laptop and I have an M1 Mac mini. I have an iPad and a Surface, which is my mobile solution. But I do connect those up to a lot of Azure systems for development, demos, and labs. And finally, I did get a Windows 365 subscription but I don't feel I've really gotten as much use out of it as I thought I would because I'm not mobile. Pers possibly if I was traveling more, it might make sense to just take my iPad along and then connect to that Windows 365 in my environment as needed, but that hasn't been my case personally. That said, I do know that my laptop will age and I'll likely break or lose a system here and there over the years and that I do have high speed internet. So as time goes on, I might find myself more and more cloud-based rather than physical hardware-based. I do ensure that I back up all of my data to cloud data centers right now because I do get a lot of value from using those remote cloud VMs for labs. Um, I'm in that mixed world, so I want to protect my data and I want to use some cloud resources. What are you using? What do you plan to use in the future? What do you think of the current state of cloud-based VMs and working with a remote system instead of hardware that you have to maintain, control, and protect? Comment down below and check out these videos that go into even more depth on some of what we've covered in this video.